Hands up. All oh, sounds okay. We're not deafening you. Thank you very much. Well trained audience today. Thank you. Uh, well, welcome to the Tank Museum on this beautiful sunny summer's day. We're going to put on a display for you now that will last about half an hour and hopefully by the end of the display you'll know a little bit more about those different types of armoured vehicles you can see hugely important on the battlefield. No armoured force commander is going to go and send his tanks forward into the attack unless he knows what's waiting for him up ahead. And even in this day and age where we've got things like unmanned drones, spy satellites, all sorts of clever ways of gathering information, still the best information comes from someone you trust out ahead of the main force on the radio giving you back real-time information. No one's putting the enemy. It's actually quite nippy. This vehicle can go up to about 55 miles an hour on the open road. And that for a three-ton armoured vehicle is pretty good. Um, it's got the commander in the turret. He's got a machine gun there. Honest truth is that machine gun, GPMG, general purpose machine gun, it's really there for a bit of moral support for the crew, not for taking on the enemy. Because your role is gathering the information. If you bump into the enemy, quick burst of machine gun fire, keep their heads down, and you back off quick. And it breaks up the outline of the vehicle when it begins at the building. Um, the commander in Berlin says, no point painting in green when we're in the middle of the city. And this is almost like those sandal kits in World War One. You might see a vehicle there, but you don't know where it begins and ends. tanks, a number, surely someone somewhere would have designed a tank, got it right, and we all follow that pattern. Um, but what you've got to think about is the different types, obviously technology changes, but also if you're going to fight in different parts of the world, the vehicle, we call it a tank, so many people are anything with a turret and a gun on, this is technically called a tank destroyer, and it was actually made back in the 1960s, early 70s, in the Cold War era, for the Swedish army. And Sweden was a neutral country, a bit like Switzerland, they weren't on the east or the west, they know all the communist side, but if you're going to be neutral, unless you can defend your neutrality, you're irrelevant. So they actually had quite a big army. And this was a vehicle they designed specially for that Swedish force. Another type of armoured vehicle, obviously you're a very sophisticated audience here today, so you can tell that's not a tank, uh, but even though we tend to call everything with tracks tanks, this one they call an armoured personnel carrier. And if you've all watched your World War II movies, you've seen the Germans, the Americans, and the Second World War, they did half track vehicles, wheels at the front, tracks at the back, nice to go from body and rear, carry soldiers. So keeping the soldiers safe, they're getting carried forward with the tanks. In Britain, we tend to call these battle taxis. The soldiers don't fight from inside the vehicle, they're delivered to where the fighting is, and then they jump out the door at the back, debusting, as it's called, and they finish their attack on foot. Now, this vehicle, it went into service back in the 1960s. The Beatles were in the charm at the time. It's still in service with the British Army today. Uh, it was called FB432, sometimes vehicles get lovely names with them, this got its production number with it. Um, and you can see it's a very simple looking vehicle. Engine is in the front, right next to the driver.
So, nice big proper tank this time. This is the American F60 tank. And again, it's another one that takes back. It went into service back in the days of the Cold War. East versus West. Uh, full of firepower, thicker armor, easier engine. And just like the Russians with their T-Tank series, you're building on. If something works, you tend to like the idea. You tend to keep it in service. You can come up with a radical new design, but if you're talking about, you know, your country's survival, you tend to go for things you know are going to work rather than taking too much in the way of a risk. Now, this is the last generation of American tanks that takes made of carved steel. Now, if you look at the vehicle, when it drives off in a moment again, if you've got the right angle on it, because even back in when this was in service, they were looking at the problem of what if it drives over a mine? Mines, if they're big enough, can flip a vehicle. If the blast effect gets trapped underneath, it can flip a vehicle all the way over. So this has got a boat shape, so if the mine goes off, the blast is vented up the side of the vehicle. You'll see that in a lot of modern vehicles, they've got what they call V-shaped hulls, uh, M-rack vehicles they're called, mine protected vehicles out in what was, well, we should have said Afghanistan, we won't say Afghanistan anymore, Iraq, Afghanistan, etc. A V-shaped hull, if it drives over a mine or an IED, improvised explosive device, the blast goes up the side. And there's the big M60, the classic Cold War sort of tank. Thick armor, big powerful gun. the very disturbing news that last night down at Lulworth, the Ruritanian army landed. I know about it. Come on, where are they? Must have been one panto. Right, here they come. Right, these are the Ruritanians. Bad lot, the Ruritanians. Now, what have they got? Britain. So, we just looked at that 432, the armor personnel carrier. We built a really good vehicle to replace it. And evidently the Royal Retainers have been able to buy one. This is the Warrior on the top with something called a 30 millimeter rod cannon in. And you put the infantry in the back. And instead of calling it an armored personnel carrier, they call it now an IFB. Infantry drop drop wire. Now it looked like uh, evidently a pretty long time away from the infantry rod too. So they've evidently sold one for the Royal Retainers. And it looked like, after driving around a bit, it looked like the Ruritanians, they found the position, okay? They, they've got this strategically important mound behind me. 
uh, that they're parking up to. You can do all the sorts of things you can find out before you put in your main net by using your scout car. And of course, one of the other great things this scout car can do, he can radio in artillery fire on the enemy, and it doesn't even have to see them. He can just know roughly where God. are they. Let's get some shell fire going on them. Let's keep their heads down. Don't let the Ruritanians settle in any way. Now, normally, let's be honest, you tend to try not get that close to the enemy. You know, you might be in the tree line in the distance there. But it does happen sometimes. You do bump into the uh, opposition. You need to get out of trouble quick. But the key thing is, as we said earlier, that little ferris down on the theory for this. Sadly, with COVID, we're, uh, you just don't have to imagine they're all in the back there. So they come around now. I think they're keeping the, uh, the Royal Italian vehicle covered there. There's our 432. And instead of a section of infantry jumping out the back, I think we're going to have uh, one token soldier today just to make sure the Royal Italians are definitely out of action. So there's the door at the back as he bursts out. There we go. Ah, oh, pathetic. Look at that. Royal Italians have thrown in the towel already.
especially in this day, you can't use your nose, but do make the most of that.